Here we are, hitting up events, drinking our way through Chicago beer, and trying not to miss a thing. Yeah, because, you know, got a cork popped out, boop, it flies like fucking 10 feet. We're like, yeah, let's do it. You know, all you have to do is add some fruit, stir it up, and ride that milkshake wave. Whenever I see him, I gotta take a photo with the most decorated brewer in Chicago, Jonathan Cutler. It'll be like the stuff you hear. You ever go to every time you go to Floyd's, all the music sounds like this. Raw, raw, raw. Sometimes you want a small beer, but really, you want a big beer. You gotta take in all those big aromatic hops. Hey, what are you doing this weekend? Waiting in line for a bottle release? You should have never been a fad. The black IPA is delicious. Hey, and welcome to Chicago Beer Pass. I'm um, Brad Chabuski. Brad, what's up, man? I'm Nick White. And we're, we're dying here, man. <laughs> what we the are, fuck? This is the evil death-ridden label. Pennies from Prague. This is a buckle-down brewing. This is a CDL, man, a Czech dark lager. Right. Almost like a black IPA. Almost. It is. A, it's, <laughs> well, you know, it's dark. Um... CD, uh, Czech dark lagers are in vogue, man. Everyone's Czech, every, uh, Czech beers are in vogue. Uh, right a now. lot of people are making them, you know. Um, I'm a fan of the toasty, roasty, yeah, dark lager. I like the range of lagers when they're dark or brown. Those are fun. Not even Kolsch's. Uh, no, Kolsch. I like Kolsch if we're they're setting us up dovetail style with the fucking tray and right. the rods. I don't want no evening Kolsch. I don't want a dark oh, Kolsch. God. <laughs> Yo, the evening coals from Half Acre, right before they closed um, the spot, the original spot, was Bizarro World. Right. Uh, but if you would have called, if you could have called it a Czech Dark Lager. Why didn't you just do that? Right. The people were not having it. The people are me and Brad yeah. at the end of our romp. We <laughs> that were, was the middle of the romp. Was it? <laughs> we, were, we were not having it. They, they set us up with something called an evening coals, and I'm like, oh, let's bring it on. And it was, yeah. It was crazy. Yeah. I forgot about that. But <laughs> this Czech dark lager, what? This beer from Buckle Down is fantastic. And the style, just Czech lagers in general are great. Yeah. And this dark Czech version is just as good. Um, great balance. Nice chocolate. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm, I'm in on this. This is pretty good. Right. 4.8. You know, it's not a crazy beer at all. Yeah. I feel like it's a good winter... Uh, just winter beer because it has that toasty, malty caramelness, but you can have a couple of them and just kind of settle in. You don't need a twelve percent stout. Yeah, it's the um. It, what is it? Is it because it, it gives me a similar feeling of the dry Irish stout? Oh yeah. Okay. Although you know it's not a stout. It's not Irish. You know it's not even an ale. It's a lager, <laughs> right? But they give me. A, a similar good time feeling. Okay, you know. good time Charlie feeling. They give me the they give me good vibes like the dry Irish styles <laughs> when they're good. Yeah, they, so nice. fun. Um, well, yeah, I picked this up when I went uh, down to Buckle Down. I said last year I was like, oh, Buckle Down needs to be a brewery I need to go to. Yeah, and I didn't go to it last year. Mm. So I made a point this oh, year. I had to do it. You know. And Brad's the reason why we end up in these suburbs, these weird, far off suburbs, you know, because I'm like, you know, it just sounds like a good idea. And then when you go, you're like, I've either never been or haven't been in years. Right. And Buckle Down was one of those places I hadn't been in years. Uh, it wasn't too busy. There was a few people in there, but it was Saturday night. So I was kind of surprised there was like no one there. There was uh, a couple with their two kids and then a group of four like people in their 60s no this is a couple people at the bar lions illinois which is southwest of the city right 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 off of what 55 i think there's an imax over there okay Um, Hmm. but yeah so we uh we went in there had this on draft and then they do five dollar pints every week of different beers and i had like a Blood red ale, they called it. Blood red ale. So it's um. This is a red ale. Oh, okay. I'm thinking like maybe a red ale with orange or something. No. But just blood red. But red they, ale. It had. I think they were calling it blood red. Just 
for the evilness. Right. It's I, just... And that was great, too. Like, I don't know if I could pick one because they were both really good when we were sitting there having them. But that was the only one we had. And then I grabbed this four pack and we headed back home. Yeah. Um, I remember when they debuted, um, it was at Haymarket. They had a really close relationship with Haymarket. I want to say they maybe even uh, their first couple of beers maybe were brewed at Haymarket. I don't recall. Yeah, I don't remember. But I remember Haymarket like really helped pushing them a lot right. when they first came out. I remember out. having them at uh, Bottom Lounge. A Bottom Lounge. Of town times. Yeah. They were on draft there. And I was like, oh, this is great. The Haymarket guys love them. So they got to be good. And exactly. Yeah. They were like, so, you know, authorized, approved. Right. You know? Yeah. <laughs> stand. They got to stand. And now they, uh, although the, the great beers, they sort of just, I don't want to say forgotten. I was under the radar. Yeah. Sure. I, I give if that's what you mean. Yeah. Because, um, yeah, there's just this, even in Chicago, even, it's just hyper local, man. You know, people just kind of, we talked about it last week, you just kind of stick to what you stick to as far as places you go. Right. You know, so even though, you know, they've been around for a while, yeah, unless you're closely affiliated or nearby, you might not get to them like that. Yeah, but they make great beer. Uh, they always have. I, I um, like, Belt and Suspenders, I feel like, was one of the first ones. Yeah, that's like yeah. a classic one. So, yeah, that was a great stop. I went there, though, after a stop at Milk Money. The old milk money. This is also out that way, out like Southwest Burbs, right? Right. Uh, well, I forget. I'm blanking on the town name. Uh, not Lamont, is it? Not Lamont. Not great. No. I'm blanking on it. I'm totally... Willow Springs? No. It's over there near Brookfield and everything. Uh, but I'm blanking. It has a nice little downtown. Milk money is in the downtown strip. Is it Glenview? No, Glenview's north. Glenview's north. Oh, yeah, Glenview. Uh, Fuck, Glenn. Okay. Now we gotta look because yeah, we're messing us, this man. up. But I was either debating I wanted to get a burger, and I saw they had a burger, and I was either gonna do that or light the lamp. And I decided, you know, I've been to light the lamp. Lagrange. Lagrange. Yeah. Okay. I've been to light the lamp, so why not check out Milk Money? Yeah. And yeah, great little downtown. They have a parking garage for like not just the brewery but there's like a floyd's there's another restaurant there's a whole there's a i think nothing but bunt cakes kind of like really nice little downtown thing mm, going on like main street and you got milk money um nothing but cakes not too shabby not too shabby yeah pretty pretty good stuff yeah, yeah. uh milk money opened right in the mm. pandemic started i think it was 2020 so it's fairly new yeah um, and then they got the old school like milk truck, or is it the milk, or is it the old glass milk jug? Is their logo one of those two, right? Right, but then you go in there and it's very, uh, yes, just modern restaurant. Like there's no milk gimmick they, to they, it. They lose the uh, they lose steam on the whole old school milk. Yeah, 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 there's nothing really happening there. What does milk is milk money a popular? phrase back in the day or something i think you had to have your milk money for school maybe to like you had to maybe lunch was provided and you had to pay for milk or you brought your lunch and you had to buy milk i know the jokes about the milkman you know right the milkman's coming through or you know you right. hear this kid looks like the, the milkman milk yeah. yeah stuff like that uh the milkman they used to deliver milk to the house huh right <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. But I got the burger. Burger's fine. Beer was pretty solid. I think I had a hazy. Um, it was good. May have had a stout. Also not too bad. I did find it weird. They still had their Oktoberfest on draft. Marzen. I was like, I was tempted. Um, What is it? Well, it's, it's January, late January. Well, yeah, it's like three months, right? So, and then if you're if it was a proper Oktoberfest, probably came out in like August, September, right? So that um, put me a little bit of like, oh, god, you know, I like myself in Oktoberfest, should I get this? But I'm like, why has this, why is this still here? Like, are um, you not selling this beer? Did you brew too much of it? Did you put it out too late? I was like, I just, I'm not even messing around with that. It's always been the running joke, you almost have to rename it after a while, right? 
Right. You know, just call it something else. Just call it fest festival. <laughs> <laughs> Heather Cunder's gonna give you a call, man. Heather and uh, Jana, they're gonna call you up. They're gonna call it festival. Festive <laughs> ale. Festive <laughs> ale. <laughs> but I did see someone order and they got a Stein, so that was a little tempting. But I don't want no. January or February now. I don't want an Oktoberfest. Just tell me it's a Vienna lager and just be done with it. Mm -hmm. You know, and then maybe I'm in. Yeah, update your menu. Vienna lager? Oh, oh, you always have a Vienna lager on? That's awesome. That's interesting. I'll take it. Uh, But milk money, not bad. Um, Well, you you were talking about, um, not around the bend, um, up in... uh, Light the lamp? Light the lamp. Burgers, if you're doing a burger... Like square lamp. off, light the lamp, not even close. It's got the Merck's cheese on oh, it. Oh man, the milk money burger was good, but I felt like it was also a burger I could make at home. Mm-hmm. Like, I think adding the Merck's cheese or having something that maybe you're not gonna buy on your burger if it's a beet or something like different, yeah, in an, either an ingredient or a presentation that right, you, you, or it should be so your smash burger should be so good that's like, I'm not making smash burgers at home yeah like they're dialed in here yeah i'm not I, if i tried that it wouldn't be as good so it was a good burger but uh not one i need to go back and to, get the burger to the beautiful main street lagrange uh, illinois huh yeah it falls down low on the list like have you ever been to uh bebop grill or oh uh, yeah Bop there's, and grill. there's one up in rogers park that's not a very great burger. You go once, and you're just like, oh, that was cool. Right. And then you're just like, I'm aware of it, and I've, and I've been. Mm-hmm. And that's about the end of it. So I think if Milk Money has some sort of uh, beer release or something like that, it would make mm-hmm. me want to go to it because it's great downtown. There's a little movie theater there. So I think it's like an awesome spot for anyone over in the Brookfield area. I remember... Um... Uh, I dish work to go to a size game years ago, but the size guy rained out. Okay. And I didn't really want to go home. And I'm like, the only time I'm ever going to go to Milk Money is today. So I went from. Oh, Sox- so you've been? I went to Sox Park to LaGrange. Did and- we talk about it on here? I mean, maybe a little bit, but I was, I was all wet. Um, I just had one beer. Oh, okay. You know, so it wasn't. Fest, uh, Oktoberfest? It was, some, it, was some cl- it was something bright. No. <laughs> 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 I also, in June, had the October. <laughs> 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 But I'm glad I went. It's cr- it is kind of sad to say, like, I've been, I'm probably not going to go again. But there was nothing wrong with it. And if you lived over there, fucking, yeah, that place is great. I mean, right. And I think that's okay, right? Because we're just not the audience. We're out of range, you know? We're just passing through, you know? It's no different from us, you know, being... It took me four, five years to get back to buckle down. You know? So. Yeah. Um, so. You know, it is what it is. At least, you know, you're there. You got some pics. You're here to report back. You know, I feel like that's what a lot of these are supposed to be. Yeah. And it's okay if we never go back. So, all right. All right. Uh, but you were not in the Chicagoland area, right? No, man. I was out west. Um, west Burbs? Cal- west, <laughs> all the way, no. west Indiana? <laughs> on the west side, man. All the way out west. I was in uh, Reno, Nevada, um, a town I'd never been to. A town I would probably never go back to, because okay. <laughs> um, there's no direct flights. I've about. I've been bitching about this for two weeks. Um, yeah, I was in Reno for work, and um, you know, so I didn't know what to expect out there, man. But I did hit up a brew. Um, hey, my moist January, you know, is over because I hit up a brewery. I hadn't hit up a brewery of any kind in like two weeks. Oh shit! Okay. So, um, yeah, I went to a place called uh, Shosh Boom. I was telling Brad in the in the pre show, like I don't know what to do here, so I just went to GABS website and sorted the winners from 2020, and the ones in Reno I've put on a list. Okay. And these guys were on a list for fruit beer, and it was a half mile from the hotel. So the whole time there, I'm thinking, man, this is a really du- even if this is your family name, right? It's kind of hard to pronounce. Like I don't know, if it doesn't it doesn't seem very catchy. Like why is it called this? It's sort of like the two hounds red. <laughs> Name that. Right. I wasn't all I wasn't all in, but then I pull up to the place. It's a gorgeous, brand new space, uh, brand new kitchen. Um, and then Schauspielm is German for uh, going down the slopes at a very fast speed. Swoosh, swoosh. Yeah. Swoosh. So it's, it's a so it's a mountain range. It's a it's an ice. What is it? Um, 
it's a mountain ski term. Okay. So, so then I'm like, oh, so it's not named after somebody. So it's like, um, they had a... still stupid. I don't, I can't <laughs> pronounce it. I'm like, is it shush boom? Shush boom? Shush. Shush, shush boom. Shush. Um, so they won a... They won a GABF medal for their fruit beer, but that was a few years ago. But they did have a um, a Belgian double that they won a bronze for a GABF. Oh, nice! So I tried that. Okay. Um, fantastic space. The snow, really? the snow lodge cabin theme for a place that is surrounded by mountains. Yeah, it with works. Sn- with snow on them, it was kind of perfect. Nice. Yeah. Uh, Reno's a weird town, man. Um, everyone complains that the Californians are moving in, making everything more expensive. Because, you know, Reno's only an hour flight from San Francisco. Okay. Uh, Three-hour drive from uh, Sacramento. And uh, it's separated from California by the Sierra Nevada mountains. So okay. I, I would I would say it's kind of like, um, you know how San Francisco is to Sacramento what Chicago is to Milwaukee. Okay. And then uh, Reno would be like the Madison, Wisconsin of it all. You know what I mean? It, comparatively. Okay, okay. Right? It's got a nice little lake. You know, people go up there once a year to party, that kind of shit. Okay. Um, but yeah, everywhere you go, I, I I did not go to a lot of, I went to a lot of beer bars, and I pretty much just drank a lot of Sierra Nevada because I never ordered Sierra Nevada, and I drank a lot of Russian River because that's not in market for us. Yeah. So I spent two days drinking those two breweries. Okay, nice. So. Not bad. Yeah. Could be worse. It did not suck. It was 65 every day. So I just sat outside and, and kind of cocktail bar hopped and bar hopped. Okay. So. Nice. But yeah, cheers to Russian River at Shushboom. Shushboom. <laughs> and uh, Sierra Nevada, which is like the number three largest brewery in America. Okay. So, yeah. Cool. Nice. Uh, so some good, good stops. This weekend, uh, we got... Cider Summit happening. The 10th annual. Right. So Beautiful uh, Navy Pier. We'll be reporting back with that on the next episode. So, uh, yeah, I don't know how... I, I'm indifferent about my cider uh, consumption right now, and we'll see what happens come Sunday. Yeah, I think the from the first time I went 10 years ago, it was, an, it was a way more educational because I didn't understand the category of cider. You know, and then all just a range of all those really cool, you know, Spanish and, uh, you know, Normandy and, you know, Italian ciders. And then even the farmhouse ciders in America. Yeah. I didn't understand any of those as, at all. But then, but now the category, I don't know if I'm as excited about the category as I once was. You know, we were saying that, that it's really cool. that it would used to be a beer fence and you see cider. Yeah. And, you know, but it just, I don't know. The, the 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 buzz around the category for me is kind of kind of come and gone. Right. Yeah. Uh, I think the last cider I had was uh, some of the Spanish ciders we were cooking in uh, paella here. Oh and yeah. So just busting out the Spanish ciders with the long uh, pour the, that Nick got me. The long pour okay. is so super whatever, fun. Whatever it's called. What's the I thing? think it is called, but there's a name for the long uh, pour in Spanish. For the thing. Yeah, with a which I forget. It kind of looks like a genie bottle. Yeah, I mean or that's long. that's pretty cool. <laughs> that's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, so yeah. I end up just drinking Spanish ciders typically when I have a cider, or possibly an Irish cider around St. Patrick's Day. Yeah. But I'm almost never gonna order a cider when I'm out and about, especially if there's like a salsa or a cocktail. Yeah. Uh, unless I was at last time I really got into ciders was when um the, right before the Norseman closed, I thought they just had a really good job of curating ciders from around the world. Okay. Yeah, and their techniques and their cups and you know just their atmosphere. I kind of dug that. So. Cool. So that's uh, this weekend. So yeah, that'll be over by the time you listen to that. Let's see what else is coming up. Uh, Punchki Fest at Mars. Oh, right on. February tenth. So you can uh, order, pay, I think it's like 40 bucks to get the four pack or four of the stouts. And then they have different vendors for Portuguese there, or you can just buy the stouts at the bar, which is that what I did last year. Mm-hmm. I'm going to go to this because I'm going to, I feel like it's a good chance to get some of these Portuguese and, you know, just do your thing. 
Although the stout is very disappointing. <laughs> <laughs> you're, a su- you're a sucker for punishment, huh? Yeah. But I don't have to get the stout. I could get one of Mars's other beers, right? Um, that are often much better. Um, Jungle Boogie's always pretty good. Jungle Boogie's good. They do great hazies. You know, they'll, they'll do that lager that look, kind of looks like um, Miller High Life, if they still do that. Chug Life? Yeah. Or the beer with all the dildos on it. The dick one? Yeah. I think that's just for pride. Oh, man. Inside. So, but you can get the stout, which I guess I'll have to get the stout for the picture, but... Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's happening February 10th at Mars in uh, the back of the yards. In the, now you're going... Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, no. the back of the yards. Where is that? Bridge, uh, uh, that might be... Uh, Bridgeport. That might be Bridgeport. Bridgeport. Yeah. Then I could be... I could go over to... Weiner. Winer or... Uh, they have a resident in there now for food. I think it's either... The, I think it's a barbecue joint. Oh, okay. Yeah. Or Better Half. Other or half. or uh, Bridgeport. That's also in Bridgeport. Remova. Right. Yeah. Um, other Half. Let's I mean, see what... Uh, there you go. I mean, you got options over there February now, 10th All breaks. of a sudden. You know? You better bring... Uh, better tap your piggy bank before you go to fucking... Uh, Remova. No, they oh, they the, changed it. They, they cut the prices. <laughs> that's yeah. right. Never mind. They changed it. Probably the same overpriced as Mars. <laughs> That's right. Those are two crews that love to, um, that want your money. Yeah. I think Mars has come down in their prices, though. Yeah. More in line. or Everyone else is more expensive or Mars is in line now. But I'm going to go to that, so I'm kind of excited for that. Any other events you've seen? Um, Eris, we're talking about Cider Summit. Eris is turning uh, six this week. Or eight? Is, is this Eight. Six Damn, Eris been around for eight years? Six or eight. Yeah. Maybe only six. Um, yeah, Eris is... Eris Nick's going to bir- check this. Eris', Eris right. birthday is this weekend. Um, and Cider Summit is doing a preliminary um, preliminary, a preliminary competition at Eris uh, okay. the night before the event. So, um, yeah, I think they're doing some sort of uh, pineapple upside down cake. Six, they're turning six. Okay. Yeah. Punks is what it's called. It's a pineapple upside down cake cider. Yeah. So that's their special release. There's going to be live music and more. Oh, so, and more. I love and more. You, know, you can't have a party without and more. <laughs> you know, if they were having this party and there were no and more, I'd be, you know, I'd be a little concerned. Yeah. You know, um, yeah, that's from, that's all day, noon to 11 p.m. So. Before on the wait on the Friday before or Saturday? No, this is uh. Or this right. is the Friday before. Okay, so Friday, so it's tomorrow. The fr- oh shit! Yeah. February second. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, live music from Zydeco Voodoo. I don't know who that is. No. Okay. That should be a good time. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, in the that's all the events that I saw. I'm sure there's a bunch of stuff kicking off. Did you see anything else? No. Okay. Uh, but I did see that Seps or Sipes with his back. It wasn't part of the sale for Metropolitan. Doug was photographed at Pilot Project mm-hmm. helping get the recipes back up. Don't, or not back up, but just going over there. Yeah. Sounds like Sipes is going to ride again. Um, they for were contract the third brewing. Third time of their life. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they were contract brewing at Metro. Um, it's a, it's what do you call those? It's a, um, it's one of those brands from like pre-prohibition era. Right. They had uh, a pre-prohibition ale, and then what's the other one? Just like a dark lager, or a malt. malt? Oh, yeah, something. The one from. Um, the World's Fair. Right. The ones from the World's Fair was a dark ale, and they debuted with a lager. <coughs> yeah. So, yeah, it sounds like Pilot Project's going to brew that beer now. But you said the picture looked like it was in Milwaukee. Yeah, where they bought the Milwaukee Brewing Company, because we've done the show at Pilot Project Chicago, okay. and they're standing on a deck, and there is, there's no deck like that, not that big, at the Pilot Project in Milwaukee. I mean, I'm here at the pilot project here. There's no deck like that. Oh yeah, they're both 
One's on Milwaukee, one's in Milwaukee. Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> It's a little confusing. So the Chicago brewery, or the Chicago brand is now going to be brewed in Milwaukee. Yeah. Just like um, Old Style. Okay. But or, we, or Haymarket. Yeah. Well, that's, that's Michigan. <laughs> oh, Michigan, yeah. So we don't know. I hope Pilot Project, or not Pilot Project, Sipes shows up at the Pilot Project here, like if they can buy kegs from themselves or move some of it back over here yeah because if you're the sipes guys you're going to want to party with it um, right. what better place to party than right there on milwaukee ave i mean they got that they got the outdoor patio it's right off the blue line yeah phyllis's pickle they, uh, donna donna's pickle. <laughs> did you say phyllis yeah <laughs> man that's old school right there phyllis yeah you know probably... donna's not donna's a little not as old school as phyllis no, well, Donna's kind of timeless, you know. <laughs> Phyllis, I feel like no, there's no new Phyllises. There's no six-year-old Phyllis. You know what I mean? Around? There's a six-year-old Donna. <laughs> I think there might be some Donnas. <laughs> you know, a Donna might survive as like maybe a middle name. Okay. Yeah. No one's. Like I think I think you're out of that'd be like Doris. Doris. It's not not like not a lot of young Dorises out here. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh man. <laughs> I got a cousin named Doris. That's so I was like, man, that's all. That's an old school name. Some like, yeah, some five year old. Like, yep, Phyllis. <laughs> Who's this? This is our daughter, Phyllis. <laughs> um. So yeah. So yeah. It sounds like Sipes is back <laughs> at a uh, pilot project, man. Uh, yeah. So good for them. But she's a super nice lady. The Sipes. I yeah. think I don't know if she's a relative or you know, just a care caretaker of the estate. Uh, but she's very cool. Yeah, so yeah. Uh, so I kind of like that they're going to still be making that beer. Nice. Yeah. Any other news or anything you saw? Um, Man, we saw Ravinia in the news, man. Oh. They're going through it, man. It sounds like Ravinia, the brewing company, is being sued by Ravinia, the um, music festival. But this already happened, right? Well, according to the lawsuit, they actually tried to stop the Ravinia taproom, the original one up in Highland Park, from opening back in 2018. And that's when they came to this ceasefire, if you will, about, hey, you can use it. You can use Ravinia name. Just uh, don't make any um, beers or any kind of signage that confuses your brewery with the festival. Okay. Yeah. And they both had, they agreed on the trademark. They agreed to share the trademark because there's a ton of stuff that named after Ravinia. Because Ravinia is the name of the t uh, town at one point. So it's not just Ravinia, the music fest. There's like, you know, Ravinia Coffee, Ravinia Tea, Ravinia Barbershop, or whatever the fuck. Yeah, okay. But there's like, you know, 10 or so businesses named Ravinia. Dry cleaners, sandwich shop, that kind of shit. Right. Oh, so they come to an agreement. They build their space in 2018. This is Ravinia Brewing. Then, you know, they build a Logan Square one, which is, you know, pretty cool because I used to be Arcade and whoever else was in there. Uh, I didn't want to say Finch, but... Uh, well, was, around the bend. Oh, ATB was in there. It was a three. It was a. It was a trio. Uh, Ale Syndicate. Yeah, and Ale and Ale, Ale Syndicate fucked it up. They like didn't yeah, pay the. Uh, yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> um, oh, so Ravinia is like Ravinia Brewing is like. All right, cool. We got this shared trademark agreement. Let's build. Let's expand our operation. Um, make another spot in Chicago, and then Ravinia Festival comes back and says, <laughs> "Yeah, we pull out of our original arrangement, and oh, now right. we're and now we're suing you." Yeah, that's the crux of it. There's some more details, but it's really long, drawn out. Um, but yeah. What's Ravinia Brewery got to say on this? Be like, <laughs> we literally have no money. We're a brewery. What are you gonna? Why are you suing us? Yeah. So <laughs> now Ravinia's got to lawyer up and fight this copyright trademark infringement. I think they're countersuing and saying, "Hey, we're not in. Um, we're not infringing. You guys kind of reneged upon our original agreement." Right. And then uh, Ravinia Festival is kind of justifying why they did it. They're like, no, it's too confusing, but whatever. It's too confusing for people. People are confusing our music festival with your brewery. <clears throat> I, what, where would you? Maybe? I've never been to Ravinia for a music fest. The company I work for always threw us a pair of free tickets once a year. Okay. But it was never for anybody cool. So you go there and see, like, you know, the Chicago Symphony Orchestra or, Ramsey Lewis or some shit. It's never for like Lauren Hill, right? Okay. But I've been, I've been a handful of times. 
But do you think other people are like, oh, let's go to Ravinia? And people are like, no, I don't, like, who's playing? Like, no, just the brewery. Right. Like, is it, I would almost think that would hurt the, like, Chicago location even more because when you just say Ravinia, people in Chicago are like, I don't want to go to Ravinia. They're assuming, you mean, uh, right. You assume when someone says, let's go to Ravinia. The talking music fest, right? Yeah, because we went to Ravinia when they did this. Uh, they did a rehab in like 2018, the Ravinia Music Fest, and they'll tell you they're the largest. Not, I'm sorry, they're the oldest outdoor music venue in the country. Okay, you know, so I think they take a lot of pride in this thing that they got. Clearly, they do. Okay, uh, but it's a nonprofit, and they have 200 million dollars in assets. So they're a nonprofit, but they're they're very fucking loaded. So they're they're kind of the ones that are like, we decide. We're the gatekeepers of this name. Ravinia Brewing should do uh, what uh, Deathwater did when they got sued by the Arnold Palmer people. You hear about that? No. So Deathwater no. came out with uh, death like the water, the the sparkling water in cans. It's just water, right? Oh, it's not even sparkling. It's just water and cans. I think there might be a sparkling version, but they came out with uh, Arnold Palmer. The death people did. Death watered it, and they called it Armless Palmer. Mm. And Mm. so uh, the Arnold Palmer family sued them. So then Death Water changed the name to basically, like some, I, I don't remember the name, but they changed it to something like Greedy Old Golfer. Suits yeah. lemonade, yeah, and so basically they uh, like the like, okay, we'll change the name, so Ravinia should just make a beer like sued by a nonprofit, yeah, like Ravinia Brewing should make a beer sued by a nonprofit, and if, if Ravinia, the music festival wants to like challenge this, start making your own beer there then, and be like, well, we're Ravinia Brewing because we make beer at Ravinia. I don't think it's not like a revolution. There's a revolution in California and they're not confusing, even though they both make beer, the brands aren't confused because they don't distribute in each other's market, even though they have the exact same name. Now the Keystone light thing where it just said stone on the can and stone brewing, stone brewing is like, now you got to knock this shit off. And stone won that. And stone won. Yeah. But, um, I don't, I don't know if people, I'm with you. I don't know if people are confusing the brewery with the, I mean, I guess the people who go to the to the fest, the people who, because you know, people go all out at this thing. They bring these chairs that look like they right. stuff Coffee tables. Looks like shit from people's regular backyards, right. you know. So it's it's a big deal to some people. Are those people going to the brewery? I mean, I guess I don't know. Yes, but also that's usually not how copyrights work. Like I could open up Ravinia, I don't know, TV manufacturers right yeah and make tvs and it's the ravinia brand you can't copyright every avenue of that brand right yeah i think it's kind of silly also if ravinia has to change their name should they change their name is that do you ravinia think Brewing? yeah ravinia festival is not changing their they're name. not changing their name no it could just be festival that was something one of the comments just be festival brewing company Right, yeah. our festival. Or, yeah. Um. Yeah. There's some uh, v- rich North Shore brewery owners fighting with some very rich <laughs> North. But they want money. Wait, <laughs> North did Shore. We the... Oh yeah. There's a GoFundMe. There's a GoFundMe Go for Ravinia Brewing Company's um, legal fund. I think the GoFundMe is for like 120k. But. The people that own Ravinia Brewing have money. Are, are, we assume they have money because they're from Highland Park. This is an, this is our assumption, yes. So we're being uh, we're being meathead Chicagoans right. saying you do you probably get... money money racist. <laughs> <laughs> we're, you live in a rich suburb. You we're, must be rich. You're on the run the North Shore, so we're going to assume you got some cash, right? That's the assumption, right? Right. It might be some broke motherfuckers in. There's apartments in Highland Park. People rent in Highland Park. Yeah. So. Do you think these guys are the one dude? Is do he, I think? Isn't he from Australia? Do the I other think? Guy? Do I think the Ravinia Brewing dudes are renting? 
No, I do not think they're renting in. <laughs> I, I don't think they're renting in Highland All Park. All of them are sharing a one-bedroom Highland Park just to get the Highland Park address. I will back up and say but that. But they're asking for money. They are asking for money. Asking for 120 k for the lawyer fees. I can't support them asking for money. That, that is a tall request. How about you throw a beer vent and some of that money goes to the... Legal fees. Okay, we're raising right? money for our legal fees. Yeah. It'll be like um, Save Our Brewery kind of f- fundraiser like festival. Kind of, kind of par- like a cup, like five bucks for the cup. Well, come party with us and help us save our fucking brewery. Yeah. That makes more. I mean, but you know, to each his own. Um, we, we've hung out with the Ravinia guys. Had a lot of fun there. I've had more fun with that location as Ravinia than I ever did when it was... Uh, Ale Syndicate? Yeah. Right. You know, only, they, no, they did a lot to it. Yeah, it looks it looks a lot better. Um, on top of that, you know, Fobat Metals, GABF Metals, they they fi- they figured out the rooftop situation over there at Ravinia. We've done the show from there. Um, they imported that fancy uh, Brunswick bar from Wisconsin. Right. Um, so that's a cool operation. And on top of that, I like their beer. So... I mean, this would suck if they closed. What if they just change their name to Ravinia Sucks Brewing? Ravinia Sucks Brewing. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I took some screenshots of these. Some of the names in the fucking Facebook were fucking blowing me, man. It was it was great. I was like, man, you boys are nuts. Chicago Botanical Gardens Brewing Company. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, the other Ravinia Brewing? Festival Brewing. We talked about that. Yeah. I feel like the other Ravinia or like. Ravinia Brewing, not Ravinia Music Fest Brewing. Not Ra- yeah, I not think- Ravinia Brewing, or yeah, not yeah, not that Ravinia Brewing. So, yeah, I mean, sure. Is it is it a David versus Goliath thing? I mean, a little bit, kind of. I mean, I don't know. It's a lot. It's a lot to ask of the public, though. You know. So. We have no, I guess, uh, I don't want to see the brewery close. I think that's the, that's where I'm at with it. Like, hey, this sucks. The, the GoFundMe is a little obnoxious, but those dudes are cool. Their space is cool, and I, I hope they don't close. I hope they don't, but I'm not going to support. <laughs> so, I'm not going to give them my money. I'll go drink and eat there. If, you throw, if they throw a fest for, as a fundraiser, and um, yeah, then I'll for sure go and support that. Taco... Beer dinner. You know? Then, uh, yeah. Yeah. So. Oh, but that was in the news. So. Okay. So there's that. They lose that, don't they? <clears throat> but we'll see what happens. Yeah. Uh, is that it? Anything else? I think so, man. I think that's it, man. All right. Then uh, let's get out of here. There's pennies for Prague. Great beer. If you can make it out to Buckle Down or if you see their beer in the store, definitely pick it up give it a try and yeah we're um tune back in next week for cider summit for recaps and if we uh make anywhere else i don't know i feel like cider summit's gonna be our our big one. Oh uh, yeah right like what else is there i mean i was thinking about um is floyd's open yet three floyds yeah uh, i was thinking about going down there man so i gotta, I gotta go out that way anyway i was thinking about it and seeing if they're open no, if they're not, you always have 18th Street, yeah, that's, right? Yeah, that's true. Yeah, so. Or Flossmore Station. Flossmore Station. Maybe I'll get an ice, ice cream truck open. I'll get the ice cream. <laughs> well, ice cream. Ice it's cream. It's probably could be... <laughs> a little early for ice cream truck at Flossmore Station. That's true. Yeah, wishful thinking. Yeah. Uh, but that's going to do it. Take care. Cheers.